Well, I'm not sure how to come after that one, Vince. <laughs> but um, I, you know, the the last couple of days I've been thinking about um, just my own personal journey and um, thinking about my work in uh, Chamorro history, the emergent Chamorro studies, uh, and in in relation to. Um, these concepts and indigenous frameworks out there that have been there since the 80s. Um, these are things that I think, you know, it, it's no surprise. Uh, New Zealand, Hawaii has been a model for many of us back in Guam. And, and to begin to try to identify these indigenous um, analytics or frameworks has begin, is, is really challenging. Um, you know, as a historian trying to look for these kind of sources, uh, you, you have to get really creative. I mean, you know, it, it requires going back to the archives, uh, but also trying to expand uh, your, you know, what it might take uh, to, to get a different take on history, right? So, um, for example, thinking about Chamorro gossip or Chamorro songs and how that could yield a potential indigenous, you know, a, a really liberating indigenous analytic um, so, so I was kind of thinking about the way that people here, scholars here have been um, using native concepts in, in really rich ways. Um, uh, Noilani's Aiea, right, to talk about a nation rising and those different conceptions. And, and that's something that I am still struggling with. This is evident in, in my trying to articulate and theorize the placental politics that's, that's a, a scholarly project, but one that's also it's first and foremost really about uh, the political project back home. And it's taken me like, you know, I've had to go this way, uh, teaching at the University of Illinois. It meant I had to kind of divert and where I want to really beef up my Pacific history game, my obligation as a native person, you know, um, teaching in a space where Indians have been removed, the issue became the Indian mascot. And so I really had to take time to kind of learn that and try to meld that with something I could use that was applicable to the political projects back home. And really, namely, I'm talking about the, the build-up uh, and the women's, the Chamorro, Chamorro women's group there, uh, movement there, um, where women back home are looking for something like resistance. Story, you know, give us something like, you know, people signing, and this is what's wonderful about Noi Noi's work, right? It gives us that. And we've yet to really see that, right? But how do we begin to give these stories of resistance at that level, but something even more that takes it to a, um, a different level of, you know, a different level of analysis that's still pertinent to the political struggles. Um, but what I also saw here uh, that's also really interesting and pertinent, and I think about this back home, is how indigenous scholars, while also trying to use indigenous analytics and frameworks, they're also trying to rework the language of development because I think it's something we can't stray from. Um, and I'm thinking of Hoku's work, right? Like the, when she says, we, we have capacity, right? I think that's a really positive step because this is the kind of language that is dispossessing native Pacific Islanders. Uh, you know, Chamorros are, you know, this is, this is what's happening back home. Chamorros get to have their little cultural space and by the way, you know, we've, we've got Chamorro lands that have been modeled after the Hawaiian Lands you know, Commission, right? We've got Chamorro Land Trust Commission that's modeled after Hawaii's um, framework. But yet in that, Chamorros get to have their space and do the cultural stuff, but yet there's something called fiduciary responsibility that, you know, this is the binary, right? Uh, natives get to occupy that space, but they can't talk about development and ways to imagine fiduciary responsibility. So the, those are the kind of things that I saw happening here and I was really excited about it because these are the things that I'm struggling with back home. <laughs> 